Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Andrea. You reached Knit LA here on YouTube, and this is a podcast about knitting, about yarn, about wool, adventures. Um, I have a special guest who is shaking next to me. Um, some of you have met. This is Howell. We are currently staying at my mom's house, which is the house that I grew up in. And it's just a totally different vibe. Um, and he's, he's kind of nervous about stuff. So I'm going to keep him close to me. So hopefully all will be okay. Um, anyway, <sighs> I hope everybody's doing well. Today's Thursday. I think it's the 28th, which is amazing. That time is flying by. Um, anyway, I'm super excited about filming this episode because I feel like there is quite a lot to say. So I just want to start by saying thank you and just give my gratitude for the wonderful women that showed up um, on Zoom yesterday. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, I hosted a Zoom meetup initially uh, for the cow that I'm running, which is the Pierre Affair cow. Um, and then some other people wanted to join, and of course, why not? And the more the merrier. And um, Anyway, so that was just so lovely. And I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart to those wonderful women um, who showed up and um, I just appreciate it so much. It was really cool. Three people had um, were participating in the cow. I saw two absolutely gorgeous shawls. Um, for those of you tuning in or those of you who might be new, um, the Pierre shawl is a shawl that is designed by Stephen West and I think several years ago and I've had it in my favorites for such a long time and always wanted to make it and I thought this was a great opportunity. So in January um, we started, it's very relaxed, it goes through May so there's even still time to jump on the bandwagon but this is the Pierre Affair. Cal, and I will um, link the hashtag down below. So I saw some beautiful shawls. Um, I know there's a sweater in progress. Um, I'm really hoping to cast on some socks. It may not happen before May, but um, anyway, that was just a beautiful midweek gift um, to receive. Um, I just thought it went so beautifully. And um, yeah, I just appreciate everyone who was able to make it. And, and next time I think I'm going to try and plan it for a weekend so more people are, are able to attend. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God, the dogs, you know, it's just the dogs rule. The dogs are ruling, ruling school. Anyway... So, I am wearing, obviously, the Pierre shawl. This is a gorgeous, textured shawl that Stephen West shows um, in sort of a beautiful, faded gradient of grays. Um, I was kind of using stash yarn, and so um, it didn't quite, it wasn't a gradient, it was very stripy. But that's okay. I also used a skein of yarn that I thought I would never ever use, but I'm pretty pleased with it. And um, overall, it came out really beautifully. So if you still wanna join, it does run through May and please hop on board. We, I would love it, we would love it. There's a hashtag on Instagram. Um, so yeah, come on and join. Um, those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I have been having a 
total sweet um, rendezvous with a shawl called the Sunday morning shawl. Sunday morning, Sunday morning shawl. And it's finished. And it's like, it's so absolutely stunning. And I think I'm gonna wear it. Cause I, why not? It's actually quite chilly in LA. Even though I'm wearing a tank top, it's because I just didn't want, um, I did not want, I wanted to be able to try stuff on. And I know that I have these cozy shawls with me. So, um, you wanna come? Um, so I knew I wasn't gonna be cold, but this is the Sunday morning shawl. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. It was designed by Melissa Clulo, uh, formerly of Espace Chico, currently of Sonder Yarn Co. And she is brilliant. There are so many amazing designs that she offered for free back in her Espace Chico mm -hmm. shop days. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of them and I'll be right back. <sighs> to think if I've like have I done an episode where I haven't had to stop and start again because of my darling boy howl anyway back to the shawl so the shawl is knit in Sonder yarn co dk weight in the color dirty weekend and it's a very simple design but I mean incredibly elegant incredibly incredibly effective. And once locked, it's just, I mean, do I need to show you? Yeah, I'll show you. It's just got like all this movement. Um, it's a BFL Masham base. Um, the color is so rich and what else can I say? I've said a lot on Instagram, so I don't want to be too repetitive, except I do want to just shout out my baubles because <laughs> I was really dreading the baubles and there are just uh, so many. I did not count because I already know how much I think there there are in my, in my mind. I wound up using the bauble technique that um, she wrote in the um, pattern and they came out really beautifully. And I'm I'm really happy with, with the shawl. I've worn it pretty much every single day since it came off the blocking mat. So, and I'm gonna wear it through the rest of this episode because it's just, it's a glorious weight. It's extremely warm without being heavy. Um, I just can't recommend this pattern enough. I. I have gotten so many compliments out in the world and um, people don't even know that I've made it. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily say, oh, thank you. I've, I made this. Um, sometimes I, I just take the compliment and I don't, <laughs> I don't need that little extra cookie. So anyway, but I am very proud of the shawl. I love it so much. It was such a pleasure to knit with the yarn um, and I kind of got a little hooked on the yarn and so I did um, get some more to make the um, easy like Sunday morning easy like Sunday morning sweater which is also a free pattern that is um, on Ravelry designed by Melissa Clulo um, and I guess I will show it. I cast on pretty recently, I think the day before yesterday. It's It was kind of, I was waiting, waiting, and I think I shared the kit when it arrived because she was offering some really gorgeous kits of DK plus their um, lace weight silk mohair called Halo. So I 
I just went full, full in. And I started it a couple of days, like day, the day before yesterday, I cast on. And I don't have that much. I haven't gotten that far. I'm just in the yoke increases. Um, actually, this collar is really nice um, and substantial and will eventually um, be folded down. Like a folded collar, sewn down. It is in the most stunning, stunning colors. So I got, um, I believe this is called French Press and I'm holding it double with Halo. And the name uh, is Horsetail. So, and I'm having a moment because I realized I got a manicure with my sister today and I just feel like there's a theme. <laughs> Anyway, these are just so beautiful to work with. Um, I am working on the size two. It's knowing what I know from having just blocked this shawl, it will grow. It does soften into this just unbelievable fabric. So I felt that that was um, the, right, the right size for me. Um, based on the measurements for the size, size three, which maybe I, I was sort of vacillating between the two, but um, I'm glad that I chose these because I do know that there is kind of a lot of um, bounce. But how gorgeous, oh my God. So I'm very inspired by this yarn, by this person. Um, I, first ordered from Sonder Yarn Co. like a couple years ago when I learned about them through the Grocery Girls podcast, which is hysterical and hilarious. And I love their sister, their sisterhood. And I wish my sister knit. Um, there's still time. She might start knitting actually. So that would be very exciting. Um, that's when I discovered her, her wool and um, I've only now just started working with it and it's just amazing. And, um, the dear, dear women over at Knitting a Good Yarn podcast, um, also work a lot of their projects with her yarn. And that was also very inspiring to me because their pieces just were coming out just so beautifully, so beautifully. And they've knit a lot of her patterns as well. So that is the Easy Like Sunday Morning sweater. I highly recommend it. I mean, so many people have knit it. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really telling the knitting community anything it prob you probably don't already know. So um, let's see, what else? Oh, I did finish a sock. I'm not really going in order. I hope that's okay. So the reason I wanna show even just the one sock is because I think that the colorway and the striping on this yarn is just phenomenal. And it's just the cutest, cutest as can be sock. This is for me and um, the pattern is, I think it's called the Daily Sock by Summer Lee. It's also a free pattern. And the yarn I'm using is a really luxurious Merino Yak from Nomadic Yarns. Um, this, the yarn colorway has kind of a scary name. It's called, it's called You Can't Kill the Boogeyman, which is really sort of terrifying, but it's gorgeous. It makes such a nice sock. Look at that. Oh, and I did have some minis. I had a little mini in this um, sort of toffee brown color. And I realized it's not really much of a contrast, but oh well, there you go. But I'm very excited. I have to cast on the second sock, but I really like that Summer Lee sock pattern. And there was a period of time when I thought I'm never ever doing a cuff down sock, but I completely 
<laughs> reversed, <laughs> reversed my feelings about that, my thoughts about that. So nomadic yarns just, if you're looking for a really special striped, self-striping yarn, I would really check out her stuff. It's, it's beautiful and her base is, this base in particular is really extraordinary. So that's that. What else? Oh yes. So in progress, I am so excited to show off my Linnaeus shawl. So I cannot see what I'm doing and I'm just praying that Oh God, hold on. No, it's okay. Um, I'm just praying that you guys can see everything. So this is, I've showed this sort of in its beginning stages, but I've gotten past the second um, row of color work, which is super exciting. Let me see if I can see what I'm doing now. Um, this is being knit with the, the first colors are Farmer's Daughter Fibers from their Sock Squad. I believe it was a summer 2022. And, um, and then the sort of transition yarn is La Bienneme uh, Merino Single. No, not Merino Single. Oh, maybe Merino Single. Sorry, Merino Sock. <laughs> Vintage Grello, which is just the most insane color. Let me see if I can just easily pull it out of here. Um, yes, I can. Vintage Grello. This was a gift during a sock gift exchange um, my, um, gift giver was a wonderful woman named Julia. Julia, I don't know if you watch this, but I am in total love with this skein. And, um, you just kind of nailed it in terms of me and color. And I was kind of having a hard time figuring out what to, um, pair it with because I, I tried it with a couple things, but... Um, ultimately, I decided to buy a uh, vintage Grello in the silk mohair. And I think it's a beautiful combination. It's kind of muted, but at least there's a really nice relationship there. And one is not really dominating the other, which is, was sort of happening um, with the other color that I had chosen. So I'm also practicing fading. Oh, and the flowers, by the way, the flowers, which are just ridiculous and stunning. And I hope they felt gorgeously. They will. Shh, what? Lie down. Oh my goodness. Um, is from Nutidin. This is an unspun, gorgeous yarn that was... I think um, the one of the offerings in January, and I wrote down the name of it, but of course I can't pronounce it properly. It's It was a very, very bright sky blue, and it's spelled B-L-A with an accent, L-J-I-S, Lagis, 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 I don't know. But this color is mind blowing. <laughs> and I'm only using it in such a tiny, tiny way. I have barely used any. I mean, I wound up a ball. I'm using it double, but I've barely touched. I mean, the ball is still almost as big as it was. So that's been really fun to use it for these kind of decorative flowers. And you know, overall, I'm really happy with the shawl. The pattern um, is by Teti Lutzak um, or Teti's Garden. And she's just an incredible designer. And she there's so many of her things that I would really love to make. Um, 
but I love this shawl and I've had it um, in my favorites for a long time. And I was very inspired by um, a woman that I follow on Instagram. Uh, she was one of the only people, knitters, that I saw actually use a variegated yarn. A lot of the um, um, samples certainly, and a lot of the color choices of other knitters have been two solid colors, which makes sense because there is a lot of texture. And to be honest, I had really messed up and I had to rip out. I think this, there were three times that I had to rip out like completely because I couldn't see it. <laughs> so note to self, but you know what? I love this shawl and I'm just really excited to have it. Um, that's upside down. And again, it's another pattern. It is so beautifully written. I mean, it's just, it's hard to make a mistake. She has included charts, of course, which is how I like to do um, most things. Although she's, yeah, so she's charted the texture and the color work. Then there are some garter sections that she has just written out, but she has also written out the color work and the um, texture stitches, which I think is really, um, really kind. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's a wonderful pattern and um, you know, I'm enjoying it very, very much. Um, oh, I also wanted to share something that I have shared before, but I'm really on it. This is a shawl that I'm knitting my mom. She knows, she's seen it. Um, this is the Mare, Mare shawl by Natasha Hornby of Moonstruck Knits. Um, I think when I shared this last time, I was really concerned that I chose the totally and completely wrong yarn, which I'm still pretty sure that's the case. Um, but I'm very excited to block, block this and just, it is gonna have a ton of drape the yarn that I'm using was a um, inheritance, beautiful inheritance um, from my aunt and her stash. And these are the colorways. I'm not even sure I have bands. I don't have bands, but I wanna show them um, singularly because this charcoal has just the most stunning, variation. There's kind of some gray, burgundy. This is a cashmere silk blend. Um, did I say, say it's Posh Yarns? Uh, beautiful dyer located in Wales. This fell down, but I really want people to see it because it's just, I mean, this pattern is insane. It is totally gorgeous and um, I really want to make, there's another one, <sighs> I can't remember now what it was called, but a lovely young woman, Nicole, <laughs> hi Nicole, <sighs> Lene, no, 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 that's not it. Anyway, she shared a gorgeous shawl she had knit also by Natasha Horn Hornby. Um, also slip stitch pattern and I, my eyes were like boing. So gorgeous. So I really want to knit that one. Um, and this is the other contrast. And this is also a silk cashmere. It has like this beautiful halo, if you can see. Um, so these are the two colors. And, you know, I understand why people use the sticky yarn, the sticky woolly yarn, because I don't know that this is really gonna fill in very well. But I'm pretty sure my mom won't care. 
So I've, I'm basically two thirds, I think, finished. And because it's already so large, I think I'm going to not do the, I think there's one more repeat. And I'm just gonna do the solid, the main color at the end. So I have some of the color work to finish and then finish the ends and then block it and then finally give it to my mother. This has been three years in the making and it's really sort of embarrassing that it's been three years in the making. Anyway, but I think she's gonna love it. I'm just readjusting here. Okay, that's the Mari shawl, Natasha Hornby. Every single thing, of course, that I talk about, I will link down below. There was a viewer who mentioned that I had not provided a link for this incredible bag. Let me get all the yarn off of it. And this is from an English maker and I'm not even, I don't think that there is a tag in the bag. So I will have to, um, but I will put the link in this episode. So thank you for pointing that out and I apologize about that. Okay, what's next? Um, oh, all right, this could be fun. Please excuse my um, brief. <laughs> it's a little revealing over here. Um, but I want to share my Celine sweater, which is, hang on, got to figure out what side is the correct side. I think it's this side. So this I've also shared on Instagram a bunch. This is the Celine sweater by Anne Wenzel. Um, this is another pattern that... I was inspired to make because of the example that the same woman, knitter, artist, um, she's like the queen of fades. Like I just am blown away by her fades. I've actually never tried this on. <laughs> so you're the first. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try this on. And I've made a, you know, obviously some modifications in the color work. Um, the color work is okay the color work so her sample and many of the other samples are knit up in you know a solid and a contrast and it's very striking very graphic um i really want to play with color right now clearly and even though i already know you can play with color because i've done other color work sweaters sort of like the next level is also just at any point in the color work design, you can do whatever you please. So that's been also really incredible. So I'm gonna kind of come closer, I think I can stand up. So, you know, I just decided to use a bunch of mini skeins that were kind of, you know, making me feel like a little bit of a glutton. Um, and now I just wanna make color work sweaters using mini skeins because it's amazing what you can put together with all these mini skeins. So uh, that is like the most evident sort of modification, I guess, is that I just kind of went to town and um, sort of painted my way through, um, through the color work. And I don't really have a lot of information on the mini skeins because they are literally just thrown in a basket. Um, the main color yarn, which is <laughs> like butter, it's like butter. It is Bare Naked Wool's Better Breakfast Fingering. And I've held it with Veronita, which is like 
I think it's a silk cashmere also, lace weight um, by Ching Fiber. And they are kind of a perfect match. Let me see if I have the, yeah, I do. Okay. So this is the Better Breakfast fingering. And it's just like a really luscious color. And um, let me see if there is a colorway, because I know this is undyed, but they sort of blend it together. Um, whoa. This is called, oh, it's called Waffle. Oh, that's perfect. So it's so pretty. It's just, it's very, um, it's kind of beige, but it has a lot of apricot peach undertone. So it is a beige that does not wash you out. I feel like it actually kind of brings brings your sort of, you know, it's a really complimentary beige. And then the Veronita is called Camel. And this is the Veronita, which really feels incredibly luxurious. And I, I bought this during one of the Ching Fiber has sales periodically, and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but I knew I wanted to use it eventually, because I had had previously a skein of it that I just was in love with, that I did knit into a sweater. So these are my two yarns for my main color, and you can see it's just such a beautiful combination. And let's see. Oh, so a few things that I did. The I think the original sleeve has more of a straight decrease on the sleeve. I cast on, gosh, I want to say like the large size for the sleeves. Like I just picked up enough stitches for the large because I love a blousey sleeve. And then I wanted to kind of try and connect it. There's no color work in the pattern on the sleeve, but I felt like if I didn't have anything, it was gonna look weird on me. So I decided to do some corrugated ribbing in the one of the colors that I used. So I'm just gonna stand up and show you the beautiful corrugated ribbing. And it's this color, it's this really beautiful deep burgundy color. And here's my cuff. Now it's unblocked, so, you know, it's all funky, but um, it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful, um, the cuff was a little laborious because it is a twisted rib. <laughs> it's a twisted rib and I did it much longer. I think this is like three inches. So I did the bigger, bigger size I think it was like 100 stitches. Knit all the way down till I was ready for the cuff. And then I decreased really um, severely over two rows before I did the cuff. And I knew I wanted to do kind of a longer cuff. It's interesting that this one shows the most. Huh. Um, anyway. I'm really happy with that choice. Like, I think it looks really good and kind of makes more sense in a way. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the bottom cuff, um, but I might bottom cuff, hem, bottom hem, but I think it would also be beautiful in corrugated ribbing, but it might be too much, so I'm not, I'm gonna decide later. But from this point, because I like to make the yoke and a sleeve to always see how it's fitting, then I'm gonna do the rest of the body. Um, I'm pretty sure the size I'm working is the third size. Yeah, it's the third size. But it's, it's a beautifully written pattern, very easy to follow and I think very easy to make modifications. So um, 
you know, this isn't necessarily like a sweater design that I would normally gravitate towards, but just having this like, aha uh -huh, moment of like, I can just do what I want, even within the shapes. That was like huge for me. So like coloring outside the lines, that kind of thing. So I love this sweater. It's very warm. Probably not going to be able to wear it, but I'm going to finish it. So it's one of the projects that I really want to finish. Um, so yes, if you have never worked with bare naked wools, I, I, I want everyone to have the opportunity to work with bare naked wools because I have the most experience with the Better Breakfast fingering, which I think is just delicious. And I used some of the charcoal in my um, Artus, Artist Shawl. Um, it's so soft and squishy, but also it has, I, I already can tell it's gonna have this like amazing drape. So yeah, I kind of, I'm, a, I'm having a big appreciation moment for bare naked wolves. I'm gonna take this off because now I'm hot. Um, anyway, Celine sweater. I'm just gonna be working on the body now, but I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. Um, let me get my shawl on. Um, so yeah, let's see what else. Can I tell you, I did that. Um, okay, so I am, <laughs> I have um, a project for springish summer, spring that will carry me to summer, I think. Um, and I'll show you just the front page. It's called the sea Seashell Set. It is a tank tank top and skirt in this sort of seashell motif, which is so cute. And this is a designer, I think it's called Knitting Things, but with two T's, Knitting Things. Dot, no, not dot com, Knitting Things Calm on Ravelry. I'll post it below. But this gorgeous set is knit in Isayer Trio 2. It is a linen, let me see, I have a skein because I, I bought a skein. I mean, I bought, I bought some yarn. I have wanted to work with a linen type yarn, but I haven't really known what to buy, what to make. Um, this answers both of those <laughs> questions. So I am going to use the recommended yarn, which is Isayer Trio 2. It's a fingering weight yarn. Um, I chose the color Bottle Green. I hope you can see. It's freaking gorgeous. It's almost like a marled yarn. There's like some black, I think, in there. This is linen, 50% linen, 30% cotton, 20% liosol, liosol, which is maybe what will give it some drape and stretch. Um, I did make a little swatch. I haven't blocked it yet and it's the messiest swatch so don't judge me so this is on the recommended um needle which is a us 3.5 well it's a 3.5 millimeter i'm not sure what that is in us um i might go down well, I have to measure, I have to measure. But um, 
I just wanted to bring up this like really scrappy, sad um, swatch because um, it's not the nicest feeling yarn. And I know, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be, I guess, but um, it feels like you're knitting with paper. <laughs> it's a little splitty. Um, I actually ordered along with that these needles that are, um, there, this is the brand because I don't really have any small, um, wooden needles, which I felt like kind of needed to use. Um, so these are them. They're, the brand is called Pony. They had them on the website that I got the yarn. It's, I think, a Norwegian brand. The yarn is a Norwegian brand. And these are really nice. The tips are pretty crazy. You can't really see, but... It's hard to find a needle that's wood that has a really nice sharp tip. At least I have found. Even those ebony needles, um, I don't know. I'm sure these will wear down with use, but I decided I probably want to use a wooden needle for this just because, I don't know. I felt like it would actually help with my tension a little bit because I'm a very loose knitter. So um, anyway, I just wanted to share that I really enjoyed using the needles, even though I have to say the yarn itself unblocked is not a pleasure. But look at this set again. Oh my God. I'm super excited. I feel like this is just a perfect project to get ready to have in the summer. So I've got a few months. So that's my aim. That is what I'm hoping for. And that is some new yarn I got. I think for the pattern for my size, I got 15 of the balls of yarn. It's not terribly expensive, um, which is nice because I had to order so much. Okay, I think the last thing I want to share, okay, the last thing I want to share is Hi, I have a color theme. So this is the most recent collection of Nutidin. I was really trying not to buy Nutidin because I do have a lot that is still yet to be worked up. But when I saw this color in particular, I could not resist. And wouldn't you know, it's kind of like the cousin of Dirty Weekend. So I'm gonna try and hold it up as close as I can without getting all blurry and weird. It's so hard for me to tell. Um, you guys, I don't, I know I say this every time I get a package of new to them, <laughs> but the depth the depth that comes with each of these plates, it's more than just the color. I mean, it is the color, but it's also like, it's just like reaches down inside of you and like grabs, if we have souls, it grabs your soul. That's this color for me. And obviously, you know, I love this color very much. Um, this color is called, oh my God, hang on. Veder Tage, V-E-R, sorry, V-E-D-E-R-T-A-G-E-T. And I almost wish I had bought more um, I know that, I wonder if they're still open because this could be a beautiful blanket. 
anyway, um, I don't know. And these, these plates have relationships with all the previous plates that have come before them. And so because I have purchased yarn, mostly every, almost every um, collection, I see, I can see like the history, the history is in there. Anyway, this might be my most favorite color that they've ever done to date that I have purchased. And I have no idea what it's gonna be, but I'm really glad that I got it. And another fun thing that I've never done, maybe because they weren't available, but I saw that they were selling little bags of like deliciousness. I think they call them, not candy bags, but something like that, treat bags. So I just wanna share my treat bag because, oh my God, what treats? Okay, this is, I think this is coming up, but hello. <gasps> is this not, it's brilliant. It is a brilliant pastel green, almost like a neon, but soft. Super excited. This is another stunner. And I think this is from the current collection. I think this is the one that has like some pinks in it and some grays and some greens. Oh, I think this is their super dark, I think it was called Total Mork, Morker. This one is, it looks like, um, it might have been from the recent update, actually. It's pretty gorgeous, like pale salmon, rusty scrumptiousness. Um, there's kind of variegated, I think it goes from sort of the green to the peach, if you can see. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm so gorgeous. I am so... Look at these two colors together, which I would not normally pair because I'm not really a purple person. However, how stunning is this? These two colors. Stunning. Okay, I'm done. That's my story. Oh, you guys, I'm so filled. Like really this Zoom experience that I had yesterday was so inspiring and just, I mean, we got to really talk. So I got to hear everyone's voices and you know, I love having relationships over you know, messaging and all of that. And I do feel like that is a way to get to know somebody. But, oh, it's just fantastic, you know? And um, I just, it makes me like, first of all, I'm so excited about Rhinebeck already. Um, I'm definitely going. And I really want to maybe go to some other fiber festivals this year. Um, I'm already feeling a little FOMO about Toronto, which I think is in May. So I guess it's not completely out of reach, but I don't know. It just, it's hard for me to go away by myself, you know, with the kids and everything. But anyway, I just want to get out there. And actually for those local, um, people who are watching, um, there's a fiber fair this weekend or next weekend. So I'm definitely going to that. I think it's in Pomona. I'm not sure what it's called. 
<laughs> so I'm very helpful here, but I'm going. Like, I am going. I'm not sure if I'm going Saturday or Sunday, but um, let me know in the comments below if you plan to go and what day you think you're going. Um, I'm looking at you, my LA um, folks. So, um, yeah, I've had a lot of good knitting um, the last couple weeks. We are almost done with the house, with the kitchen. So that's going to feel really nice to move back in. And um, although I must say, I am loving being at my mom's. It's just so much fun. It's so wonderful to have coffee together in the morning. It's just so awesome. Um, anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm enjoying this sort of shift of seasons. I always feel like when the outside becomes, you know, really beautiful and full of life, it encourages us to behave in the same way. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you enjoy these videos, um, please give it a like and a subscribe as I suppose, so I've heard, this helps me, um, you know, cast the net even wider. So, um, thank you for hanging out with me and I'd love to know what you're working on, what your spring summer projects might be. Um, also, I know I've asked this before, I think about linen, but just curious to know what your, um, what your go-tos are in terms of like plant fiber yarns or blends or lightweight summery yarns. That would be awesome. All right. I will um, catch you next time. All right. Take very good care.